For a trade? Yes. Do you want some? Yes. Do you consent to be recorded? Yes. Introduce yourself with your name. Give your date of birth. Tell us where you are from. Karpenko Roman Olegovich. I was born on December 24 in 1988 in Kramatorsk. I am divorced. I have a son. How old is the son? 14. Kramatorsk has never been under occupation. He was, in 2014. Did you go in there? Militia came by. Who are these militias? Who were the militia? Were there any Russians among them? Who was in charge of them? Do you know anything about this? Who was in charge of them? Of course I know, they told me something, they said something. Strelkov was in Slavyansk, and Babe he is Kazakh, as far as I remember. In 2014, I was there for a short time. I took my child to Belgorod. Is Babai a Kazakh? I guess so. Do you know anything about him? I don't know anything. How long were they in Kramatorsk? I don't know, I left. I left before the Ukrainians came in. Excuse me, allegedly liberated Kramatorsk. I know that I will be held responsible for my words. I'll tell it like it really is. Let it be what it is. They supposedly liberated Kramatorsk. The Ukrainians went in there. The Russians left Kramatorsk, where and how, I do not know. I had already left Kramatorsk at that time. I took my family to Belgorod. About how we left. First I went to Nepropovsk. My ex-mother-in-law lives there. I was looking for a job. I had a car. I was refused work everywhere because my passport says I am registered in Kramatorsk. Employers weren't interested in what I could do or how I could do it. Everything was fine until it came to the propiska. What did you do? What is your education? What is your profession? I'm a car mechanic by training. I have an honors degree. I used to work construction. Did you study? I graduated from a regular high school. There's water under the table. You can take it, it's a new bottle. Thank you. I think you're thirsty. Eh? Yes, sniffed the paint, maybe. At work. Do you do something in your specialty here, too? I do a variety of work here. What did you do with the paint? Yesterday I was stenciling with nitro paint, it stinks, maybe that's why I'm thirsty. I see. Maybe I'm thirsty because I'm sick. There's a lot of possibilities. If you want to say what you said, fine. I'm gonna tell the truth. Say it. That's the second time you've said that, as if I'm inducing you to say something that isn't true. I was looking for a job in Nepropovsk. You left Kramatorsk when the Russians went in. No. When I left Kramatorsk. I left Kramatorsk when there were still Ukrainians there, or when the Ukrainians were coming in. Why did you leave Kramatorsk? My son was frightened by the gunfire in the park. We were shelled by Ukrainians using grad weapons. Shots were heard nearby, a child got under the car. After that, I left Kramatorsk at 5 o'clock in the morning. Where and how were you shelled with grads? Not as specifically, I mean, there was shelling in the vicinity. We were resting in the park at the time. There were very loud explosions. I see, it was grad. The kid went under the car, we barely got him out. We decided to leave, where to? Not to the Russian Federation first. We stayed in Ukraine, went to Nepropovsk. My mother-in-laws. The issue with the grads cannot be ignored because we are telling it like it is. Do you think Ukrainian grads are flying on wings somewhere near you for no reason? They just fly over a peaceful village, there was no one there. From Chalk Mountain. 
In that case, I must deeply doubt your words. You're welcome, of course. You realize there's no logic to it. Why? What is the logic in shelling a peaceful village? What else would you call it? I don't know. There is no logic to this war. There is no logic in them putting military equipment on the school either. What logic is there in that? The Russians don't? I don't know what's going on out there. I was at my house. It is very unfortunate that you do not know, but if you were interested, you would know that from that side, starting in 2014, vehicles came in and stood among peaceful and civilian objects. They stood in various places, including just sleeping sectors, and fired grads from there. You say, I'll tell it like it is. But there's a problem. You have one-sided information, I'm forced to just supplement it. You know, I always judge people by myself and my situation. I never judge people by the words and actions they say to me. I judge by what I see. I'm going to ask you another way, have you looked, have you tried to find this information that I'm telling you about what the other side was doing? You ask me a question about why and how I left. And how do I know it was Ukrainian troops? Because I saw it myself. I tell you again, I judge only by what I saw. I don't believe what other people say. I understand. So you saw how Ukrainian grads moved in, stopped, and specifically these Ukrainian grads opened fire on a peaceful village where there was no one. You saw all of this. Yeah, you could say that. How is that even possible? I don't know why, I didn't shoot, I didn't put it up. How can I explain it to you? How can I explain if I didn't do it? You're sure of that, you know that. I just realize that it's not physically, technically or visually possible. It can be believed, of course, if you want to, as you believe. But I deeply doubt what you say, it's every man's right. I will comment on why I question them deeply, I've made my point, what I have seen, what I know, is 100%. How? I explained it to you. Where did the Ukrainian grad stand? At the deployment site. Where is this place? Chalk Mountain. Chalk Mountain in Kramatorsk. Chalk Mountain in Kramatorsk. There were Ukrainian positions and grads there. Where are you located, now? Then. Vesely settlement. You were there and you were walking with your child in the park. No. Where? The park is above and the township is below. You were above, walking in the park. Yes. Where was the shooting? I don't know, it was really close. You have just said that grads shelled a peaceful village. Ukrainian grads shelled the peaceful village of Vesely. Peaceful village of Mary, but not at that point, you're a little confused. Am I confused? As we were walking with our child in the park, I've said this many times before, explosions were heard. The child was very frightened. And when a peaceful village was shelled, I have already said, you can see it on the video, when a peaceful village was shelled, there were no militiamen or anyone in the city of Kramatorsk. Were there any militiamen in the village of Vesely? There was no longer anyone in the village of Vesely and in the city of Kramatorsk. That is, we should understand this situation in this way. The Ukrainian military are stationed near Kramatorsk, there is the village of Vesyaloi next to it, where there are no militias and everything is normal, and the Ukrainian military start opening fire on this village with grads. Yes, and then argue that they were kicking out the militias out of town. Where can this reasoning be found or viewed? It was written on the internet. How they liberated Kramatorsk. I don't remember specifically. How Kramatorsk was liberated. I know exactly what was written, and they liberated it, because there really were Russian military there. But what you're saying is that they were just standing there, smoking and opened fire on a civilian settlement. I didn't say I was standing there smoking. No, they were standing around smoking. Who? Ukrainian military. I don't know what they were doing. There are no hostilities in the settlement. Why do you shoot then? 
I question the very fact that they fired on that settlement at all. Everyone has an opinion. Tell me they did it, go online. No thanks. I even have a Wi-Fi connection. I'm interested in these things, let's investigate. For what? Because I'm tired of listening to nonsense. You asked me, I told you my opinion. Opinion? Let's argue it. I justified it. I told how everything really happened from my point of view. Let's summarize. Yes. Have you seen how the Ukrainian military is shooting at the village of Vesely? Have you seen the exits and entrances? I saw exits from the city, but not a single entrance. I saw the inputs, not the inputs, or rather, only then the results of this output. Were the results necessarily the results of this output? No. That's what you want to say. That's not what I want to say. I want the audience to understand that people like you have the opinion that the Ukrainian military fired at something there. Although if the results are not necessarily consequences of these outputs, then the results could be a consequence of completely different outputs. That's all. That's what I want to say. Am I wrong? Is there no logic in my reasoning? Well it turns out like this. My mom gave birth to me, but you didn't see it, so it turns out my mom didn't give birth to me. Sorry, but you said 10 minutes ago that you are guided only by what you see. Only this. That's why I stopped talking to you about what could have happened or you were looking for information, but I'm talking about what you saw and asking you. I answered. Have you seen Grady? We saw it. Do you understand that the consequence of inputs is the result? You say, no. What was I manipulating then? Have you seen this with your own eyes? Where am I manipulating? I didn't see how you were born, this can be determined by DNA. By DNA. Spit into the test tube. That's why I say. Show me that the Ukrainian military fired at the village of Veseloy. Show what? Find on the internet that the Ukrainians shelled the village of Veseloy. Any information can be deleted on the internet. Information that is not needed is not allowed on the internet. Okay, unnecessary to, to the audience. Then find it on the Russian internet, why look there? I can open Yandex for you and connect a VPN. No problem. Now to the real story. I believe and fully admit that maybe you were not hired in Napur because you are from Kramatorsk. I admit that this could happen. How many attempts have you had to get a job? There were a few for sure. And everything is the same? Yes. Is that why they didn't hire you as a mechanic? I didn't get a job as a car mechanic. I thought that you were getting a job in your profession. I worked as a car mechanic for a very short time. I did this for myself. And so basically I was always involved in construction and worked as a driver. What job did you try to get? On a construction site and as a driver, even in your own car. Didn't they hire you as a taxi driver? How can I be a taxi driver if I didn't know the city? I didn't know the city. Maybe. In Kyiv, all taxi drivers do not know the city. I don't like working when you don't know your profession. Well, there are navigators now, thank God. It's bad if you don't know the road, I used to work as a cab driver back home. In Kramatorsk? In Kramatorsk, yes. And in 2014, I used a truck to deliver food to the towns of Krasny Liman, Slavyansk, Andreevka, Bakhmut. Is it already Dnieper? Not when I was in Kramatorsk, before the kid got scared. I got it. What kind of car do you have then? A passenger car? Gaz. You had your own car. And you couldn't get a delivery job anywhere with it? I wasn't accepted. What can I do? And the reason was that you're from Kramatorsk? Apparently, yes, because when they opened the passport and saw the propiska in Kramatorsk, somehow it all happened like that. I don't know why this is so, it's not my question. I give myself to my work. I've worked my whole life for my family and myself, I don't have one that I can't do. Even if I don't know something, I still try to do it. What happened next? Next I went to Belgorod. 
I was simply invited to work in Belgorod and I went. I earned my first money, rented a house, took my family, took the smaller child. He paid 50,000 rubles to the Ukrainian side for the elder to be released, as he did not have permission from his native father. We paid money to the Ukrainian side at the border to let him through, to take the child away from the war. I take it this was an informal payment of some sort? Uh, sure. Did you pay a bribe? Yes. So say. We bribed a Ukrainian warrant officer? We gave money to the Ukrainian side to release a child from the hostilities, I said so. It sounds to the Ukrainian side as if you paid money to some state body. But if you gave money to a thieving Ukrainian warrant officer, of which there are many in any country, then this is a slightly different situation. How is that a different situation? Wait, he's a Ukrainian warrant officer? He took an oath to Ukraine, he works for Ukraine. So he's a Ukrainian man on whom his own country is pinning its hopes. So this is the Ukrainian side. Have you contacted law enforcement about this? Why would I report an offense if I was already in Russia? I worked there, I had a car and a house there. You could reach out to law enforcement. I took the baby out, I had a baby living there. Have you told journalists about it, written about it? I'm not a public person and never have been, so why tell it? You're telling me now. Well, because that's the situation now. Because I was safe at the time. At the moment, I'm here. In danger. Why would you be in danger? No, I'm in the zone now, I'm a convict. A regular convict, and I'm thankful for that, that I didn't end up somewhere else. I'm thankful for that. What other place? Anywhere else. Okay. How did you end up here? How did I end up here? Well, again, what I'm about to say. I went against Ukrainian army lawlessness. Against army lawlessness? Yes. I don't speak for everyone. I'm not talking about Ukraine right now, about betrayal. I am talking specifically about army lawlessness, for which no one gave any orders, no one gave any authorization, and so on. You can also tell me now that there was no such thing. I don't even know what you're talking about yet. Can you elaborate? Of course. I am here. I am a fire adjuster at the Kramatorsk airfield, that is, directly at the Kramatorsk airfield. Is this now an admission or a doubt? No. That's not a confession. That's what I'm sitting here for. A statement of fact. Is it true? Yes. It was. Well, I'm pointing artillery. You ask me what I'm in jail for. That's what I'm in jail for. Let's move on to the immediate events. On April 27, 22nd, while in the territory of a certain military unit. What happened next? What do you mean? What happened next? I stopped by there. I drove in there, did the work and left. A job? Yes. Were you paid to do this? Yes. How much? I don't remember, I don't know the full amount of the fee. To put it crudely, meaning not that I gave up my position, but the job they called about. At the time it was air conditioning repair. Okay, then we'll roll back even further. An app like Zello and registering under the name Mario. What was this done for? There was no other way. You can register there under any nickname. Did you do it for a specific communication or just because you liked the app? At first I just liked the app because it's a lot of people, a lot of topics. It's not specifically a military app, it's not military at all, it's nothing. It's a socializing app. There are musicians and car enthusiasts. There are Ukrainian military, Russian military, Israeli military, Turkish military, all sorts of things. 
How exactly did you get involved with Alexei? I won't read any further. He is a fairly serious man, not a commoner, not even a Kadyrovite. Especially not some ordinary separatist. A real FSB officer in a serious position, how did you get involved? And how do you know this is an actual employee in a certain position? I didn't know that. How do you know that? I'm getting my information from this sentence here. It specifically states position, surname, name, department. I didn't know that. I've been saying from the beginning that I didn't know that. He had a simple nickname, I had a different nickname. I didn't know who he was. I understood that it was the other side, but who exactly and what exactly, I still don't know. It says, let's say it's like this, and I'm not sure it is, because I don't know. I can't know that. That's why we communicate. You didn't know. No. And the question is simple. How did you make contact with him? We've been communicating, just channel chatting, that's all. It was a news channel, with news about the situation here and there. Anyone could speak, anyone could speak, anyone could talk. A news channel in an app? Uh, sure. Like a telegram feed? No, not as a telegram channel, that's where they mostly talk. Little is written and more is said. Is that voice chat? Well, sort of. And that's where you started talking? You could put it this way. About what? About Ukraine being bad, right? Well, why is Ukraine bad? Wait, why are you always? I thought you were transmitting the coordinates of the tech, so we're talking about a different Ukraine. What other one? What Ukraine do you live in? I don't understand what Ukraine has to do with it, I'm Ukrainian too, so what? I have, Ukrainian, written in my passport, and you have, Ukrainian, written in your passport. But neither I, nor hundreds of thousands like me, are pointing Russian missiles at Ukrainian equipment. Not everyone's like you, you probably wouldn't do it under the guise of civilians. You'd tell me a story like that. I already told you. You only know everything from the Ukrainian side. When I ask about the Russian side, you say that you could not see it. I don't know and I haven't seen it. Why are you talking about cover? It's combat. It's what it is, and it's forced. What kind of people? We were forced to, because on the Russian side, the military are standing behind peaceful houses, stationed in kindergartens and schools and shelling us. And they are shelling you as well. What should we do? Leave the city? No. They're taking advantage of the position and firing in the opposite direction. And you keep telling me about cover. Even though you only know it from one side. And from where you've been socializing, who you've been socializing with, I can see where you've been getting your information from. And for the viewer, it will make sense. Why are you asking questions? To understand, to reveal, to show. It says it all. I won't say anything new, because I've said everything I know I've said. I got an answer to a question about how you communicate with that person. I didn't know. You didn't know he was FSB, you thought he was just a nice guy. Nice guy, right? Just got into a camaraderie with him. I didn't know he was FSB. And did you inform him exactly where the missiles hit in Kramatorsk? No. This is not a truthful sentence. From Beresnia 22 to the 26th of June 22. Karpenko gave the above-mentioned persons information about the shelling in the city of Kramatorsk. Kramatorsk. Is this information not it's true? Been said. This information was everywhere. So it's not specifically what I was broadcasting. I'm not asking that. Wait, no. Did you tell the guys that or not? Just whether there were arrivals, where exactly in Kramatorsk? You did? He said. Well, that's all I'm asking. Well, try to hear me. Then our communication, which obviously gives you no pleasure, will last less. Me? Yes. I just have a lot of work to do. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> this is where the job won't run away from you. Nowhere, that's for sure.
Next. After that, in the period from the 26th to the 27th of April of the 22nd year, Karpenko, who was in the city of Kramatorsk, notified the same person through the same application that he planned to visit such a military unit on the 27th day of the 27th, which is located there. He was given the assignment that before finding the location of the premises, there was no assignment. Was that the conversation between you two? I've got a job. I'm going to go to the unit. There was a conversation. What does the assignment have to do with it? I didn't get an assignment. What was the conversation about? You said, I'll be there, I'll be there. And him to you? Okay, yeah. Super? Yeah. That's it. Being on the territory of the military unit, which he discovered the location of military equipment and was already in Kramatorsk at such and such address. Transmitted from my account to Maggio in the same photo upload. You did? It wasn't a snapshot. Why? The Google map of the usual screenshot marks where the machinery was parked. And why did you decide to pass on this screenshot of the marks? So that this equipment doesn't go into town, doesn't provoke gunfire. I've already heard that. Now about your interactions with him. No, you're just out of nowhere, aren't you? So that the machinery doesn't come out and provoke anyone. He didn't ask you? No. It says so right there. Your conversation is over. It says that, you have received the task, that is, the task is such. No task was given to me. I'm trying to find out what it was like, I'm telling you, I didn't get any assignments. How can he give me an assignment if I don't even know him? I don't even know his name. I know he has an account. I gave it to him. I know it's another country. What's the assignment? I gave it to him personally. What assignment did I accept? And the motive? So that this equipment doesn't go into peaceful neighborhoods. Okay, here's the motive. You're saying it was just an ordinary man? Once again, this is a man who was on a news channel giving information, news. I told you. Well, who gave us the news? I figured it was just information that would get where it needed to go. Probably to the missile force or something. I don't know where. I gave information, sent a picture with these coordinates in the expectation that it will be transferred and that's it. Did you realize that this man would hand it over to the right place to destroy Ukrainian equipment? Yes. Destroy I don't know. No, you don't. It's all the same episode that you went to install air conditioners in this part, right? And it goes on to spell out simply. Just to sign off on one episode. Is this the first one? One episode, there was only one episode. It's all one episode, one screenshot, one location. Yes. It's not like you challenged anything. No. No location, no motive, no. Yeah. You didn't get any money from the other side for that picture. You didn't get anything from the other side? I wasn't even thinking about money. Nine years. Nine years. Part 3 of Article 114 to 2. Part 2. 114 to 2. Part 3. Well, that's the whole situation. For the audience, I say these are the kind of people who live among us, the kind of people who suddenly thought. That Ukrainian equipment should not be here for a long time, knowing nothing about military actions, or about what that country is doing, not being interested in anything at all. Seeing Ukrainian equipment in a Ukrainian city may decide to show the coordinates of Ukrainian equipment to the Russian side. That's what this story is really about. Because is there anything else you want to add from yourself? No. Then ask the Russian side to take you in for an exchange. I don't want to do anything. Okay, well, then if anyone needs it. I'm going to ask a couple basic questions. Are you there man? I don't know. You gave them the location of Ukrainian equipment. Logically, I guess, yes, I am. Since I helped them in my time, although I don't consider it a help to them specifically. 
And to whom? Yourself. You. Do you have relatives in Belgorod? No. I have no relatives in Russia. Didn't one of your relatives invite you to Belgorod? No. Friends. Huh? I have a few stories in a row, they can just build on each other. To work. But you worked and lived in Belgorod. Yes. Yeah, I mean that. They don't leave their own behind, they say. You ever heard that? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Do you think they'll take you to Russia? Well, instead of a Ukrainian who doesn't give up his equipment and understands everything. I'd be happy to have someone from back here. I love these so much. Our patriot. I love these displays of altruism so much. No. Why altruism? I've been saying from the beginning. If at least one Ukrainian comes back here, who cares who to feed better than their own will? A traitor. A separatist, as they say around here. They love to talk, that's a fact. Don't you realize you're a traitor? No. You surrendered the location of Ukrainian equipment to the attacking country. So what? You have done actions to destroy Ukrainian equipment in Ukraine. Are you a traitor to Ukraine or not? For the Ukrainian authorities, yes. And for the people of Ukraine? I don't know. It's not just power, only power. Just the power? We have no freedom of speech in Ukraine at all, and never have. Is there such a thing in Russia? I don't know. Oh, expected. Let me try to initiate an experiment. Just to give you a little bit of, I just don't know how to explain these things to you. You answer as you please, to everything, and so it will be, but let me intercede. Sign the paper so you and I can go out on the town, have some coffee. Take a walk. And we ask people, are you a traitor or not? We'll just tell you what you did and ask. I don't see the point. Why? Because. Because all people are scared at the moment, no matter the country. Why are we scared? Russian missiles have been flying at us for a year and a half now. Based on tips from people like you. I'm scared myself from time to time. This, of course, is probably an instinct of self-preservation. So let's take a walk, ask people, traitor or not traitor? No, I'll wait. Why? You say that only for the authorities you are a traitor. Let's show you yourself. We'll ask the grandmothers. We'll ask the worker. We'll ask the worker over there making the road. There's a girl selling in the coffee shop, we'll ask. Let's ask people. The man in front of you was pointing missiles at Ukrainian equipment. Is he a traitor or not? Let's hear people's opinions. You will think that all my people are there. We'll go anywhere and ask anyone. No thanks, I'll wait. Do you know the problem with this experiment? What? What do you think? She is one. What? In ensuring your security. Why? Because the essence of the situation will not be said, the specific phrase, traitor, fire spotter for Ukrainian equipment, will be said, that's all. But why all this was done and why it was done no one will talk about it. There will be a need to ensure your safety, not because someone will want to listen to your sob story about nothing, but because you could simply be torn apart by accident. Is it true? Because one single phrase will be said, a fire spotter using Ukrainian technology. Okay. I will say the phrase, he adjusted the fire on Ukrainian equipment because he believed that Ukrainian equipment should not drive in Ukrainian cities. Exhaustive? This is all that can be understood from your story. You started to repair the equipment because you believed that it should not be used in Ukrainian cities. Exhaustive? We approach a person and ask, good afternoon, may I ask your opinion? This person is. You ask me the question, shall we go or not? I say no, that's it. What questions? No, these are just experiments, these questions so that even the most complete idiot can understand who will see how your opinion is. This is my personal opinion. This is your subjective opinion, not only that. This is what I was saying every person has their own opinion. 
Where is the freedom of speech here? Just how much? Your freedom of speech ends with the criminal code, dear. So what does freedom of speech have to do with it? I am now being punished for mine. Only they do not concern freedom of speech. They are punishable under the criminal code. What does this have to do with it? But for what you are saying now, you will not answer in any way, he was told. No, of course, if one of the people around you listens to this and decides to communicate with you, then, of course, I am not responsible for that. No one can answer, but this is freedom of speech. After all, you have an opinion, and he has an opinion, right? Welcome to democracy. There's nothing you can do about freedom of speech. And as for everything else, I'm telling you here you go, let's see. Do Ukrainians share your opinion, who, according to you, are not of interest to anyone? And Zelensky and his entourage are the only ones to blame for this. I can show you that you are wrong and I am talking to you about this so that the very last complete idiot who will watch this will understand all this.